A common love for each other, a common gift to the Savior, a common bond holding us to the Lord. A common strength when we're weary, a common hope for tomorrow, a common joy in the truth of God's Word. A common love for each other, a common gift to the Savior, a common bond holding us to the Lord. A common strength when we're weary, a common hope for tomorrow, a common joy in the truth of God's Word. Welcome everyone to our broadcast this morning. Obviously the weather has uh, prohibited us from meeting uh, individually here at the worship center and at the church, but we are thankful that you are listening online and for those that have tuned in for the worship service this morning, we are thankful for your presence. We know that uh, we would all be here in the auditorium if we could, but we are glad that you're with us online and uh, ask that you uh, join us for our worship service that will be coming to you as we go along this morning. Just, uh, just a quick few announcements that we want to uh, ask you to remember in your prayers, those that uh, are sick. Uh, Evelyn Andrews, Catherine Halsey, Nancy Striblin, Andre Porter, and Jim Scott. Uh, understand that Andre's injury was to, to his eye, uh, but he is, uh, he is coming along well. It, it, and Jim Scott, I talked with him just a day or so ago. He is still hospitalized up in Smithville and uh, expects to be there for another two or three days before getting to go home, but he is improving. Uh, from what he was when he initially was hospitalized. So let's continue to pray for all of those that we have on our sick list and those that are hospitalized, pray for their quick recovery. We will be uh, sending out notices when the uh, next service will be. If uh, weather continues to improve uh, following this weekend, we'll um, go ahead and have services as normally scheduled. As we uh, continue our, our service this morning, let me ask that you join me as we offer a prayer. Almighty God, we are so thankful that you are looking down over us and we're thankful for your love for us. We know, Father, that we aren't always in control of what happens here weather-wise, but we're thankful for those have, that have been able to uh, provide the worship service this morning. And Father, we pray for those that uh, have been mentioned that are sick. We know that some are confined at home, some are hospitalized. We pray that you would be with them, uh, give them all the strength that they need to get well. We pray for the doctors and nurses that are ministering to them, and we pray that they'll soon be well enough to leave the hospitals and recover at home. We're thankful for the love that you show to us each and every day of our lives, for the blessings that we receive that are so abundant uh, Father, we know that we are blessed beyond most nations of the world, and we thank you for that. We thank you for the opportunities that we have to worship together, and we're thankful for the opportunity that we have to worship online when uh, the physical facilities aren't available. We ask this morning that you bless us in our worship, bless us in our song service, and Father, help us to always know that you're in control, whatever the situation may be. And if you just look down with tender mercy on us as we get through these difficult times weather-wise, we're thankful for your blessings and your, the way that you continue to be with us and answer our prayers on a regular basis. This morning, Father, as the congregation worships from home uh, by way of the media outlets that we have, we're thankful that we have that, that source that we can uh, worship, even though it might be a part in physical body, we can worship together as a congregation of your people here at Goodlettsville. 
And we pray for each and every member that during this bad weather that all will be safe, no injuries will occur. And Father, we're looking forward to that time when we can gather together again here at this place. We ask that you forgive us of our sins. We ask you to bless all of those that around us that are suffering illness at this time. And we pray for those that are doing missionary work throughout all points of the world that we support from time to time. And we ask that you just continue to be with them as well as they proclaim your message throughout their areas. Father, we know that uh, we are involved in several activities uh, during the upcoming days with uh, food giveaways and things of that nature. We pray that you would bless us with conditions that would allow us to proceed with that just as soon as possible and the bad weather clears. Thank you so much, Father, for your love for us. Thank you for your protection. Thank you for the opportunity that we have through you and your son, Jesus Christ, to live with you forevermore when this life is over. We ask all these things and give our thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. You are my strength when I am weak. You are the treasure that I seek. You are my all in all. Seeking you as a precious jewel. Lord, to give up I'd be a fool. You are my all in all.
We now come to the time in our service where we focus on the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To help us focus our minds at this time, I want to read some scripture from Isaiah chapter 53, verses 1 through 9. Who has believed what he has heard from us? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant and like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him and no beauty that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And as one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions, he was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace, and with his wounds we are healed. And we like sheep have gone astray, we have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that before its shears is silent. So he opened not his mouth. By oppression and judgment he was taken away. And as for his generation who considered that he was cut off out of the land from the living, stricken for the transgressions of my people, and they made his grave with the wicked and with a rich man in his death, although he had done no violence and there was no deceit in his mouth. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we come before you at this time and we ask that you would take this bread and to bless it as it represents to us the body of our Savior Jesus Christ, who suffered punishment, torture, and a cruel death on the cross for our sins. We pray that as we partake of this bread, we'll be mindful of his sacrifice. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, at this time, we ask that you would take this fruit of the vine and set it apart as it represents to us the blood of Jesus Christ, who so freely gave his life on the cross, and it's through the shedding of his blood that our sins are washed away. All this in Christ's name we pray. Amen. This is the customary time if we were all together, we would take up the collection just because it's convenient. Uh, be mindful of the fact that we're not here today and, and you can bring your contribution with you the next time you come or you can mail it in or there, you can give online. Let's say a prayer thanking God for his blessings. Our Heavenly Father, we come before you and we realize that Without you, we have nothing and we are nothing. That you've given us all, you've created us, you provide for us daily. We, at this time, we wish to give back a proportion of what you've given us and to you so that the, your word can spread here and around the world. Please help us to do so cheerfully and with a loving heart. In Christ's name we pray, amen. When my hope and strength is gone, you're the one who calls me on. You are the light, you are the fight within my soul. Oh, your resurrection power burns like fire in my heart. When waters rise, I lift my eyes up to your throne. We are. 
Welcome and glad that you're joining us this morning online. I know the weather is not uh, like it should be, but we are glad that you well, we have the capability to be online and join each other as we worship together. You know, we just celebrated not too long ago, just a few weeks ago, we, we celebrated New Year. And a lot of people, as the New Year rolls around, they, they want to figure out what it is that makes me happy. That's, that, that's what it's all about is is what can I do or, or what kind of goals can I set that are going to make me happy? And so this morning for just a little bit, I want to talk about having a happy new year. What is it that makes us happy? Uh, what is it that, that we can do this year coming up here that we're already in, but, but as we go through this year, what is it that's truly going to make us happy? And so I want to talk about that for just a little bit this morning as we deal with uh, a biblical topic on happiness. And as we, as we think about the question, what can we do, uh, can we have a happy new year? Uh, that's always a question maybe that, that we ask ourselves, can people truly be happy? Can I truly be happy? And so uh, I want to look at some, some scriptures in God's Word and some things that as we walk through here, I want us to look and see at some ways and things that we can practice in our life that can truly make us happy. And so the answer to the question is yes. We can be happy, and yes, we can have a happy new year. So let's talk about some of those things this morning. But the first thing I want to mention or talk about is, what makes us happy? Or maybe the better way to look at it would be this, is what we think makes us happy. Because as we look at the world in which we live in, we see that people uh, buy things or, or they go places or they do things all the time that they, they feel like, you know, this is what makes me happy. And so as we look through some of these things, maybe you can relate. Uh, as, you, as you notice some of these uh, things in these listings here, uh, and you may have taken some of these and said, you know what, I, I've tried to use that to make me happy as well. You know, for instance, a lot of people uh, will find happiness in coffee. 
Uh, they, they go to different coffee places and they, they, they drink different kinds of coffee. And man, coffee really makes them happy. We, we think about video games and electronics and cars and uh, we go to clothes. People buy these things all the time. Every time something new comes out, they, they buy that because uh, the last time they bought it, it made them happy. And then the next time that they buy it, it's going to make them happy. And so they just continually buy things that they feel like this is what's going to make me happy. We think about people all the time. They, they do vacations uh, because that's what makes them happy. Uh, we, we, we find happiness in exercise. And even though it's good for us, uh, a lot of people, that's where they find their happy place is, is by exercising. Uh, sleep is another one. I hear people all the time say, man, I'd just be happy if I could get another hour of sleep or if I get two hours of sleep. And so uh, sleep sometimes makes people happy. New things, uh, just any kind of new thing. Uh, until the new wears off. It makes them happy. Uh, we talk about money. A lot of people find happiness and they put all their happiness in how much money they have or how much money they can get. And so they find their happiness in money. Social status is another one where people feel like if I'm accepted by people socially, then I am happy. Uh, drugs make people happy. Uh, a lot of people, that's why drug addiction is, is, is so rampant and why so many people are addicted to it, because it's in the drugs that they find their happiness. A lot of people find happiness in food, especially what we would call comfort food. And, and when stress comes in life and when things happen in life, a lot of times we try to find happiness in comfort food. Uh, gambling is another one where people will find happiness. They, they go to different places and they gamble their money away and do different things like that because that's where they find happiness. And so what we look at a list like this and what we say is, is this makes me happy. And a lot of people think, as we, as we look at this list, a lot of people will put everything they have into some of these things because they think this is what makes them happy. But here's what I want you to notice this morning. As we look over this list of things, one of the things that continually comes back to my mind is this, that all of these things are temporary. They only last for just a little while. The highness of, of being on drugs only lasts for a little while. The new wears off in cars. The new wears off in clothes. Money only lasts for a little while. Coffee only lasts until you drink that last drop. So all these things that a lot of times we put our happiness in and we, we, we stake everything in, what we need to realize this morning is it's only temporary. And so let's talk about perspective for just a moment. Because in order to be happy, in order to have a happy new year, let's talk for just a moment about our perspective. What are, how are we looking at life and how, how are we looking at things in life? I, I want to draw your attention this morning to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Beginning at verse number 16 and working our way through chapter 5 and verse 10, I want you to notice what Paul here, as he writes to the church at Corinth in this letter to the church at Corinth, he writes to them about this very thing and about having the right perspective. Jesus, many times, when he would talk to people, he would try to get them to understand what is your perspective in life. Uh, as a matter of fact, he told them at one point in time, he told his disciples that, that, that where your uh, treasure is, there your heart is also. And so, uh, or where your heart is, there your treasure is. Uh, and so, Jesus was trying to explain to them there both ways as he was looking and saying, listen, wherever you put your heart, that is where your treasure is going to be. That's where you're going to put things. That's, where you're, that's going to be your perspective. And so, Paul writes here in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 16, and he says, so do not lose heart. Though our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. For this light monetary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. As we look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are transient, but the things that are unseen are eternal." And so Paul writes to the church at Corinth, and one of the things he wants them to understand is you need to have the right perspective in life. Where are you focused on? What are you doing? Paul says we need to focus on the things that are unseen. We need to focus on the things that are eternal. We don't need to focus on those transient things, those things that are seen, those things that we just talked about that are temporary. And so Paul here basically in 2 Corinthians 4, 16 through chapter 5 and verse 10, he weighs out to them and he's trying to get them to understand the difference between temporary things and eternal things. 
I want to challenge you this morning as we look at God's Word. One of the things that His Word says is this, that eternal perspective is key. That whether or not we're truly going to be happy in life, it's not about the eternal things. Even though that's where we put everything, that's where we, we stake our happiness, is to make sure that we're focusing on those things that are temporary, and that's what makes us happy. But Jesus and Paul and many others want the people to understand and want us to know today, truly want to be happy? You want to know what happiness is all about? Let's focus on the eternal things. The eternal perspective is key. And so when we look at the Bible, one of the things that we find, or many things that we find throughout Scripture is this, that there are several things that God says through the Spirit and gives to the authors of the New Testament and says, these are some things that are truly going to make you happy. And so what is it? That, that God's Word has to say to us that, that really we need to put our, our focus on, we need to have it in perspective, and we need to really concentrate on these things in order to truly have a happy new year, in order to truly have a year that is happiness for us. Not focused on the eternal, but focused, or not focused on the temporary, but focused on the eternal. And so let's look at some of those things. J.A. Packer said this. He said, the way to be truly happy is to be truly human. And the way to be truly human is to be truly godly. I love that, that quote because what he really wants them to understand is it's not just so much to be truly human as much as it is that we need to be truly godly. Eternal perspective is a key to being truly happy. But here's some things we want to list throughout God's Word, and I want you to notice with me here a few things. Notice he says, putting God first can make us truly happy. Many times throughout Scripture, even Jesus himself made mention about the fact that God needs to be first in our life. The eternal perspective for us is God first. Paul, in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and following, he pointed to the fact that, that, that God is first and needs to be first in our life. Notice what Paul says in Galatians chapter 2 and verse 20. I've been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Notice that Paul here in Galatians 2 and verse 20, he says this. He says, you truly want to be happy in life? Put God first. It's Jesus that was crucified for you. And you have been crucified with him. Therefore, Paul says, it's no longer me that's living. It's no longer about this eternal perspective. But now it's about the eternal perspective. It's about me living for Jesus. It's about me living with him. And the life that I live is, is I live it by faith in the Son of God. That's eternal perspective who loved me and gave himself to me. What makes me truly happy? It's putting God first in my life. Focus on the fact that not only that, but also, if we truly want to be happy in life, we need to focus on loving one another. Focus on that passage of Scripture like 1 Peter 4 and verse 8. Above all, keep loving one another earnestly, since love covers a multitude of sins. What makes us truly happy in life is not the things that come and go, but it's those things that last forever. Loving one another, putting Jesus first in our life. What about the ideal of the Bible speaks of losing hate? Lose hate. Now, there are some places in Scripture where God re tells us and wants us to understand that we need to hate some things. We need to hate sin, but love the sinner. We need to hate evil. But what we want to talk about this morning is hating people. We need to lose that. We think about the world in which we live in and a lot of the reason why the world is such in the place that it's in and why there's so unhappiness in the world is because of the fact that so many people have so much hate in their life. So today I want to challenge us to lose hate. Leviticus 19 and verse 17 and 18 says this, do not hate a fellow Israelite in your heart. Rebuke your neighbor frankly so you will not share in their guilt. Do not seek revenge or bear a grudge against anyone among your people, but love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. Now Leviticus chapter 19, 17, and 18 is an interesting text that we pull out to talk about this. But here in this text, 
what I wanted to show us is, even back in the Old Testament and all the way through Jesus' teaching and into the New Testament, what we find is there's a common theme. And the theme is to lose hate. Do not hate a fellow Israelite. Love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus said, the greatest commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. But the second is that you love your neighbor as yourself. When we think about the kingdom of God, one of the things is that there's no room for hate. And so again, we truly want to be happy. Let's get rid of the hate in our heart. Let's love one another. Let's love God with everything in us. Proverbs 10 and verse 12, hatred stirs up old quarrels. But love overlooks insults. Let's focus this year on getting rid of the hate if we have it in our lives. And start focusing on a kingdom word, and that is love. And loving one another. Another way that we can truly be happy this year is is not by the temporary things, but the things that are eternal, and that is to give generously. And no, we're not talking about necessarily just thinking about giving of our our financial means or or giving money in the collection plate, and and that's always something that's good. But really what we want to talk about this morning is is giving in so many different ways. There's so many ways that people can give in the kingdom of God. They can give of their time and their talents. They can give of their money. They can give of so many different things. And so this morning what I want to focus on is just simply have a heart of giving. Focus on for just a moment this year and say, listen, I'm going to do whatever I can. I'm going to give more. Matthew chapter 25 and verse 31. I love this text in chapter 34 through 36. When the Son of Man comes in His glory and all the angels with Him, then He will sit on His glorious throne. And the King will say to those on His right, For I was hungry, and you gave me food. For I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me in. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Jesus, talking to his disciples, he commonly uses this kind of language to simply say, My kingdom is made up of givers, of people that are willing to give of their time, of their material things, of whatever it is. Jesus says, You want to be happy? You want to truly be happy in 2022? Find a way to give back to God and to His kingdom. Another thing that we need to focus on as well as as giving and being happy and and being truly happy is that of forgive quickly. Psalm 65 and verse 3, the Bible says, Though we are overwhelmed by our sins, you forgave them all. Though we are overwhelmed by our sins, you forgive them all. Jesus was one that was willing to forgive, and he sets that precedent for us. That that if you're his follower and his disciple, you need to make sure that you are willing to forgive and do it quickly. Don't allow those things to fester up in yourself. Don't allow those things to, to hang over you, but to give. Forgive quickly. Colossians 3, verse 12 and 13, Put on then as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, Compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, patience, bearing with one another. And if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other as the Lord has forgiven you. So you also must forgive. Throughout Scripture we find time and time again where God says, and and Jesus in his writings, he even lets them know, listen, forgiveness has to happen in order for us to be forgiven. And so you truly want to be happy? you truly want to focus on things, and you truly want to have happiness in 2022, let's focus on forgiving more and to do it quickly. Another thing that I want to say this morning is this, that I think it's key to any year or any successful life, anything that we do as a Christian, prayer must be a part of it. Romans 12, 12, rejoice in hope. Be patient in tribulation. And listen to what Paul says. He says, be constant in prayer. That's not the only time that Paul says that. In 1 Thessalonians 4, Paul says, pray without ceasing. Continual prayer is what Paul emphasizes there. Jesus in his ministry time and time again, and we can look at Jesus' ministry and say it was full of joy and there was happiness in his ministry. And probably the reason for that was Jesus did these things that we're talking about this morning. And another way that we can be happy and truly be happy, it's not with the the temporary things, but it's with these eternal things that we're focusing on. And that is to pray 
continually. You want to truly be happy in 2022? Let's not focus on so much of what we can get or what we can buy or what we can have. Let's focus on the things that we find in God's Word. Let's focus on those spiritual things. Let's focus with an eternal perspective in our life. And so let me give you three things this morning as we conclude that I want, to, I want us to focus on. All these other things we talked about, let's study them more, let's talk about them more, let's focus on them more in 2022. And so here's our happy focus. You want to be happy? Seek Him. Put your perspective on Him. Follow Him and His teachings. Follow and do what He asks us to do. But more than anything else, if you truly want to be happy, focus on Him, Jesus our Savior, the one that died for us. It's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. When we focus on these things and we focus on Him, we become happier because our perspective's right. The eternal things, the things of this world, the physical things, they go away and then we become unhappy again. But eternal things, Jesus keeps us focused on Him, and He's never going away. And let's focus on the hope that comes by having a relationship with Jesus. But also, you truly want to be happy this year? Let's focus on giving other people that hope as well. This morning, I don't know where you're at in life. I don't know what you're struggling with. I don't know this morning if you even a, have a relationship with Jesus. If you don't have a relationship with Jesus, let us help you. We have a text number here that you can text in your prayers. Any any prayer that you want or or any kind of question you may have, not only can you text in, but you can go to our website at goodlessfield.org slash response. We'll get back to you as soon as we possibly can. If you need to become a Christian, we want to help you with that. If you believe that Jesus is the Son of God, if you're ready to confess with your mouth that I want to be a follower of Jesus, I believe He's the Son of God. If you're ready to be baptized into the waters of baptism, to rise up out of that a new Christian, a new creature, a new person, now walking after Jesus, now having that relationship with Jesus, we want to help you with that. Maybe further study is something you want. Maybe you need to study more. We want to help you with that as well. Whatever it is we can help you with, we pray that you will allow us to have the privilege and the honor to pray for you, to pray with you, to study with you, to do anything we possibly can to minister to you. Please Let us know. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for the opportunity we've had to study your word this morning. Thank you for the opportunity we've had to worship you this morning. Father, I just pray that as as we go about this daily walks of life, that we will always focus on you, that our perspective in life will be eternal. And Father, that we will truly find happiness in life in you. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen.
most kind and gracious Heavenly Father, we're thankful unto Thee for this Lord's Day. We're thankful for this time we've been able to come to worship and to study Your Word, to meet around Thy table to remember the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. Father, we're thankful for Jesus that He died for our sins and pray that You would forgive us of our sins, help us to live better for You each day. We're thankful for this lesson that Derek has brought us. Pray that you would help us to use it in our everyday life. Help us to take it and study it so that we can be better servants of thee. Father, we pray for all those that are sick, that you would bless them. Pray also for those families whose lost loved ones, that you would bless and comfort them. Father, we pray now that you would be with us through this day, that you would keep us safe, help us to get through uh, this day of, of bad weather, and pray that you would just bless us and help us to serve you. We we'll make this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> 